This is She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. Your host, Kinsey Roberts, interviews incredible women in the wedding industry who are making their mark and creating success on their terms. Join the conversation. Hello, hello, and welcome to episode 110 of She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. This is your host, Kinsey Roberts. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I have a really Whoa, I have a really productive and highly actionable interview for you today with Chelsea Foster. And once you are at the end of the interview, you're going to say the same thing probably. You'll be like, whoa, that was highly actionable. This is a really, really great interview. I hope you enjoy it. And if you are someone who needs organization, if you're someone who needs workflows in your business, if you're someone who already has those things, but you really want to brush up before engagement season hits, this episode is for you. Really looking forward to introducing you to Chelsea. I have said really like five times. I guess I'm just excited. Before I tell you a little bit more about Chelsea, I want to remind you that the Venue Academy from Lindsay Lucas of Lean On Me Consultants is opening soon. And if you are a person who has been dreaming of a venue, if you already have a piece of land, if you already have a venue in mind, if you are currently a venue owner, but you need to tighten it up, or if you're currently a venue owner and you want to expand and you know that you're going to have to go get another loan or another investor, The Venue Academy is for you. I am offering some one-on-one bonuses. The Academy opens in very early October, uh, and I will share the actual date with you as soon as I have it. But either way, if you are even just a little bit interested in learning when the Academy opens, go to shecreatesbusinesspodcast.com, and at the very top of the website, you'll see The Venue Academy. Click on it, hop on the wait list. I'm not going to send you any other emails other than, hey, the, this is open. Here's my bonuses. Um, let me know if you have any questions about that. You can DM me on Instagram and you can email me. DMing on Instagram is probably the easiest because I'm on there all day because I'm a loser. I'm just kidding. I'm not a loser. Maybe. I don't know. But I am on there all day for better or for worse. So DM me on Instagram if you have any questions. I'm at she creates business. And hey, While you're on your phone, would you do me a huge favor and subscribe to the podcast? It really helps other people find the show and uh, it helps it rank higher in iTunes. New subscribers is where it's at. And if you wanted to take a screenshot and show people that you're listening and share it on social media and tag me, I wouldn't hate it at all. You can use the hashtag we create business because that's what we do, ladies. We create business and a lot of other things. Okay, without further ado, let me talk to you about Chelsea. She's a workflow and productivity specialist, coach, and host of Burnout Proof Your Biz podcast. Chelsea provides a unique perspective to the entrepreneurial world by advocating for no one right solution for all businesses. I love that. Every business is unique, so the way they run and the tools that they use should also be unique. She has helped transform the businesses and lives of overwhelmed and exhausted small creative business owners by guiding them in creating organized, specific workflows that are not only simple, but easy to use, and by assisting them in selecting tools that work for their business and their personal learning and organizational style. This is incredible. You're going to understand what she means when you hear from her today. This has allowed Chelsea to be, or this has allowed her clients to become the expert. So they run their business and live their dream lives on their own terms. With an emphasis on building relationships and face-to-face interactions, Chelsea is able to connect with her clients on a deep level. She supports women who are so over feeling lost and near burnout all the time and are ready to finally start living their dream life through private coaching, done for you setups, workshops, and her membership group called the Empowered Boss Lab. And she recommends or she um, lets you know about where to find all of these things. And they're also in the show notes. So without further ado, let's go to the show. This is Chelsea Foster. We're talking today about specific ways you can organize your business to propel yourself forward and specific ways you can implement workflows that make your business run on autopilot. Chelsea Foster, welcome to the show. Ah, thank you so much for having me, Kenzie. Thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure to have you. And you are in California? Yes. Ah, so we have a little bit. Well, actually, it's still hot here. I'm in Colorado, but very soon we will have very different weather. <laughs> yes. Yeah, very, very different weather. Have you ever been here? I have not. It's one of the states that I don't, I can't remember if my husband's been there yet or not, but it's on our bucket list to go there. Both in the summer and in the winter. (laughs) Yes. 
please do. I live in the perfect spot for that. So if you ever get to Colorado, you have a friend. Yeah. Um, yes. And I live near like Glenwood Springs and Aspen. So there can be like skiing involved or hiking, you know, depending on what season you get here. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I will not go skiing. I okay. Skiing is not a friend to me, but Forget my husband skiing. probably would. <laughs> okay, he could go skiing and we'll have hot chocolate. Yes. <laughs> So as I always do, I read your bio there at the top of the show, but I would love for you to tell the listeners just quickly in about two minutes who you are and uh, where you're coming from, what you're doing in this big wedding world. Yeah. So I am Chelsea B. Foster. That's the name of my company too. Um, And I help wedding pros organize their business so they can finally start living that life that they created their business to live. Um, And so what I do is I come in and I help you figure out what that organization should look like, what business tools you should be using, and what the workflows are that you should be implementing in your business. And then I help you do all of it so that you walk away with a plan and an action step and you are ready to go and start conquering all of those amazing couples out there and making all the big bucks and doing all the beautiful weddings. Um, So that's kind of what I do. I have several avenues that I help my uh, clients with. And so one of them is through a podcast. I have the Burnout Proof Your Biz podcast where I talk all about different tips on how to burnout proof your business, specifically geared towards those people that are in the wedding industry and anyone that is doing graphic or web design, because that is what I am familiar with because I actually started my business or my entrepreneurial career by designing wedding invitations. Um, And so I have a soft spot for the wedding industry. I understand it. I know exactly what you guys are going through. I know that right now it's September and you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's like, it's a little bit out there. We can see it. It's coming. (laughs) Um, So I know um, exactly what you guys are going through. And I really want to help you be able to organize your businesses so that you can give the best experience for your clients. You can quit worrying about the day-to-day stuff and just really give everything you have to your clients and to those events. And I think it's an important distinction. I just wanted to shine a light on something that you said is that you actually get in there and get your hands dirty and help them do the thing. You're not just like, here are some theoretical ideas that could help you. And like, Dubsado does have workflows. Good luck. You actually help them. You're an implementer. Exactly, exactly. And I actually forgot to mention, I do workshops throughout the year as well. And I just wrapped up a summer series. Um, It was eight or nine workshops in a row, one after the other each week. But what I do on these workshops is I do a short training. And then we have a co working time where we actually implement what you just learned. And I expect that everyone that comes on the call actually puts into action what we talked about. And it may not look the same for every person on the workshop call. But everyone will do something that has to do with what we talked about. And it's really um, empowering to see how much everyone gets done in just 20 minutes of co-working time and how if they sit down and focus and learn that one specific thing and then go implement it, the big changes that can happen in their business from that little tiny thing. That is such stellar advice. It's so true. When you can narrow your focus, when you have, I mean, what is it? Time blocking. Everybody mm-hmm. says it, like not multitasking. It's yep. incredible what we can get, get done. Gosh, I just think of how many 20-minute increments of my life I waste on Instagram. <laughs> yes. Um, stellar. You mean both. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only one. I'm going to link to those workshops in the show notes, everybody. So if you want to take a peek at those, I think you just said you're about to wrap up your last one. I wrapped up my summer series. There is going to be a fall series coming out soon. So um, I'll have a link in there for you guys to sign up for the wait list so you get notified as soon as new workshops come out. I love that. I think it's important to... I think it's, well, we're going to actually, this entire episode is about workflows, so we won't talk about what I think is important. Let's talk about what you think is important. Um, (laughs) Really quickly, I have a very important question to ask you. Yes. Is it Zapier or is it Zapier? (laughs) (laughs) This, okay, this has been a debate since um, my husband, so it's my husband's company, which is why Kenzie's asking this yeah. question. Um, <laughs> We're going to get to that. That are like, why is she, why is she asking Zapier? her this? Yeah, so my husband's company, it is Zapier, Zapier. Um, and they like to say that Zapier makes you happier. And Stop it right now, printing a t-shirt. I know, I know. isn't that so cute? I'm just kidding. I wish I would have come but up you with should. it. <laughs> um. But yeah, no, it's spelled incorrectly. It only has one P and the way you pronounce it, it should have two P's. But yeah, it is called Zapier. But they wanted API to be in the middle, which makes total sense because that's what their business is built around is all those APIs. 
stop it. It really is. Okay. Yeah. Oh man. I just feel like, okay, my life is complete. That's what I needed to know. Um, <laughs> I'm going to talk to everybody I work with. So I work at Acuity Scheduling during the day and our clients use Zapier a lot uh, yes. to for integration purposes. So I'm taking this back to work and I'm going to be like, ah. <laughs> You're like, I know. Yeah. I know what it is. <laughs> All right. Off of that, off of that guy who owns Zapier. Um, <laughs> let's talk about you. So we are talking, we have kind of two, they're, they're, there are two quasi topics, you guys. They're really the same. But the first thing we're really going to touch on is organization in your wedding business to propel your business forward. And simultaneously, we're also going to talk about how you can burn out proof your wedding business through productivity and workflows, which truly, as Chelsea was chatting with me offline here, just goes hand in hand. So we're going to touch on both of these things. And Chelsea, I would love to start I love to just kind of deep dive into actionable tips that whoever is listening can take these and like go implement them much like your, your 20 minute, uh, co-working session. So let's start with, um, excuse me, organizing our businesses to propel us forward. And let's just do what five tips for what people sure. can do to organize and propel. Yeah. Another t-shirt. All right. Okay. So I know I'm going to have to keep track of what number Write I'm these on. Down. All right. So. <laughs> And I know Kinsey will put these in the show notes for you guys too. So you don't have to take notes, but we'll both take notes so Kinsey's we stay on track. notes for you guys. <laughs> um, okay. So I definitely think the first thing you need to do whenever you're ready to get organized is to sit down and actually figure out, okay, what is it that I like about my business and what is it that I don't like about my business? And I love to use this grid method where um, I draw out a four by or a two by two grid and in the top left corner, I'm going to try and do this and not mess up the directions, <laughs> but the top on along the top of it, you are writing the things that you like and the things that you don't like. So the left column is all things that you like. The right column is all things you don't like. And then the top row is going to be things that you're good at. And the bottom row is things that you're not so good at. And so you fill in this box. So if you, we start in the top left, that box is things that you're good at and things that you like. If you move over to the top, right, things that you are um, that you are good at, but you don't like. And then the bottom row, things that you are good at, but don't um, really like to do. And the things that you are not so good at and the things that you don't like to do. Um, and so by creating this grid, mm -hmm. you're able to really quickly see what areas of your business you need to get off your plate and the areas that are draining you and stressing you out and giving you all the grief um, every single night, that's what's keeping you up at night. Um, and so once you create that grid, you're able to see, okay, these are the areas that I need to work on my business and I need to figure out a better way of doing it. So that's step one. That's perfect. And so this, oh my gosh, I was like trying to draw this grid myself, but mostly I just stopped because it was terrible. So I mostly just wrote down number one, what do I like? What am I good at? But I don't, or don't, shouldn't be doing. What do I not like? And I don't want to do. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And once we have this grid, yes. what do we do? Are we saying, I'm guessing that we're saying what we like to do, but shouldn't be doing and what we don't like and don't want to do? Are we talking exactly. outsourcing? Um, so the conversation goes a couple different ways. It depends. If you are ready to start outsourcing some stuff, absolutely. The things that are in that bottom right corner, the things that you don't like to do and that you're bad at or not so good at, um, those are things you need to get off your plate immediately. Um, and I always like to start there because honestly, if you look at some of the things that are on the list, some of them need to just be taken off the list completely. So like not even outsourcing, but just like getting off your plate. Like you don't need to be doing those. No one needs to be doing those for your business. They're not important. They're not adding money to your account and they're not getting you new clients and they're not Ooh, helping savage. your current clients. Ruthless. I love it. Yeah. Well, you have to edit before you can move forward. So um, I always start to look at that stuff first. So what can we just completely get rid of 100% doesn't need to be on your list anymore. And then we'll come back in. And if there's anything left in that box, those things we need to either automate or outsource and make sure that they are not being touched as frequently by you because they are either draining you or they are taking you way too much time. And then we look at our two corner boxes, the top right and the bottom left. And those are things that 
you might be good at, um, but you don't really like to do or that you like to do, but you're not so good at, Mm -hmm. they're probably taking you a lot of time. So these are the things that we will want to try and automate a little bit, but obviously because you still find enjoyment from them, you want to keep some of those things on your plate. Ah, okay. Loving this. So we have, not only have we created our grid, but now we have uh, sectioned this grid off into actionable steps. So what am I keeping? What am I outsourcing? What am I completely deleting? Because it's not adding any value to my personal happiness or, you know, more importantly, or equally as importantly, revenue to the business. What's step two? Exactly. Exactly. So then step two is we got to figure out how we're going to do that. So we look at our business systems. What Um, programs and tools are you currently using that you really like, you feel like they're working for you and what things do you need to change? Um, Is there a gap that you're feeling that um, maybe you spend way too much time scheduling calls with clients or scheduling meetings with clients and you are ready to just like outsource and automate that and you want to sign up for Acuity? Um, Like that For me, that's always one of the first steps for my clients. I'm like, okay, let's quit wasting time sending emails back and forth. Um, So figuring out what? I just said amen to that. Yes. (laughs) So figuring out where you can go ahead and start automating and figuring out what business tools are working for you, which ones aren't working for you, and make a plan for what you actually need. And then go find those tools because they're out there. And what are, oh, so Acuity Scheduling is one of them. You guys know, full disclosure, I work for Acuity. Um, yeah, Chelsea obviously does not work for Zapier, but so I, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so I, say, I really do. I tools. use Acuity in my business and See? I love it. <laughs> and she loves it too. So that's an example of something you can use to decrease or almost eliminate scheduling emails back and forth. What's another, just a software or two that you would recommend that maybe people consider in this step? Um, So I would consider some social media scheduler. I personally love using later, but there's a thousand out there. Um, So get, you can get yourself away from your phone for a while. Okay. Do that. So you can schedule those. Um, I would also, if you are ready to add a CRM and start automating the invoice contract proposal process, I would highly recommend either Dubsado or HoneyBook. They are both fantastic. They do a great job of automating that piece. You can also schedule emails within there um, so that your clients and potential clients know that you are right there for them. Even if you're not in front of your computer, they don't know that. They absolutely don't. We're going to chat about those. What's step number three? Um, Okay, so step number three, let's think about this. So we made our grid. We figured out what we don't want on our plate, Mm -hmm. and then we figured out how we want to get rid of them, what those systems are going to look like. And then step three is to go find the tools that are going to help you do that. So whether that's signing up for some workshops, signing up for a training, whatever it is, um, I want you to go find the resources that will help you actually take action. Um, Because the last thing I want you to do is make all these plans and then the plans to sit in a pile on your desk and never get implemented. Yes, I couldn't agree more. Implementation is, well, it's it's similar. It's exactly like what we're talking about with your 20-minute co-working sessions. Implementation, I feel, could be the solution to so many of our problems as entrepreneurs. Yes. There, we're no shortage of ideas. That is not the problem. We all have amazing ideas. I think that, but that's kind of the curse. The The <laughs> solution to a lot of our problems is implementation. And I would even go a step further and say, well, and you said resources, which to me, tools and resources is not even just, you know, SaaS programs or other softwares, but it's also outsourcing to a human if you need to find someone else to do it for you. I mean, something I just outsourced, could I do it? Yes, I could, but I don't want to. I need to create a sales page for the Venue Academy, a course that I'm an affiliate for. And I, could I do it? Sure. Yeah, I could. And I, but I don't want to, and I just want to get it done fast. I want it to be awesome. And I'm not an awesome copywriter, but I know that when I'm done with that, it will bring such peace of mind and the anxiety that I feel until it's done will be completely eliminated. Yes. Oh my gosh. You can't see me, but I'm over here nodding my head like so vigorously. Yes. And that, that is the whole, like finding those resources and what you want to outsource is the key piece to making sure that you are not overwhelmed because all of these things, like you said, you could create that sales page, but one, it's stressing you out just thinking about it. It And two, 
you're, it's not in your zone of genius. So why not take it off your plate, ask someone else to help you with it. And that's one thing that I think as entrepreneurs, we forget um, to ask help a lot of the time. And yes. there are so many people out there that would help us and for free or for some money. I agree. Absolutely. And you know what I think might be stopping us sometimes is that we're afraid we, A, we don't know how much stuff costs. So we automatically assume it's too expensive for us. And as wedding vendors, I beseech you to stop doing that because you, we don't want our clients to do that to us. You know, we don't want them to say, gosh, a wedding planner seems like such a luxury or I don't want to pay five figures for a photographer. No, no, no. We want them to pay us what we're worth. But I would venture to say that people out out there to help you for just, you know, just these one-off projects like a sales page or scheduling social media for a month are not as expensive as you think. And honestly, don't be afraid to get quotes. Like this is business. Don't feel like the first person who tells you how much they are. If they are out of your budget, go to the next person. It's business. It's not personal. Don't be afraid to ask someone, yes, how much do you charge? We do need to know that information. You know what I mean? Like, yes, let's all pay each other what we're worth, but also be like, meet yourself where you're at and don't try to overextend because, you know, you're trying to be like the most altruistic entrepreneur in the Facebook group. Yes, yes. No, I totally agree with that. And know that even if you are just starting out, like there are people out there that will help you in your price range. That's right. And it is like, it's totally fine to say no to everyone that's out of your price range. It's okay. They won't take it offensively. And if they do, like, they don't need to be in your circle anyway. Right. That's their thing. And they, they you're not their clientele. Like we talk so much in this industry about our ideal client. You are not their ideal client and there's nothing wrong with that. They're going to find their ideal client and you are going to find your ideal um, outsourcer, outsourcee. I don't know exactly. what the word is. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So we have found the tools and or the resources, whether that be yep. a person or a software to help us. That was tip number three. What's tip number four? Okay, so tip number four is actually to start writing down what you're doing. So the, and this gets into the workflow piece, but my biggest organizational tip is to actually write down your processes. That way, you know where in every single project you are. And if something were to happen to you, someone can step in and help because like, I, it is one of my biggest nightmares and one that I had when I was designing wedding invitations is that something would happen to me and I wouldn't be able to design their invitations and I was going to ruin their wedding day. And like that stress alone was just overwhelming and silly. And I'm, I've since been working with a therapist to work on why I had that fear. <laughs> but good. Um, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's valid though. Valid. It is a, it's a, it's a total valid fear. Yeah. And I mean, sorry, I, had, I did not mean to feed that fear. It's not valid. No, no, no. See, move on. <laughs> no, it, it is a valid fear. It is not a rational fear. Um, and it's that. one that I have control over taking steps to make sure that um, my fears never come to reality. Um, and one of those steps is to go ahead and write down my processes and keep track of where I am on all of my projects so that if something did happen, like if I broke a leg or if like my family members have been sick this whole year and if you're following me, you guys know that. And if you're not, go look and see how long I've been out this year. Um, and so having these systems ready and being able to say, okay, on this project, this is where I am. And if I need some help, I can email a friend and be like, Hey, can you help me with this? Or email a VA and be like, I need help with this. And they know exactly what to do exactly where I am in the process. And I don't, it doesn't take any time from me. So the, to get there though, you have to start by writing down what you're doing. And I don't make this overwhelming. It can very easily become a very daunting task. Just start with grabbing a piece of paper and keeping it next to your computer and jotting down notes as you're working with clients and working through projects. That's as simple as it can be. Oh, great tip. It it can feel overwhelming. Setting setting anything up at the beginning, there's there is pre-work, but the pre-work is so worth it. I completely agree. And let yourself be okay with it taking a while. It doesn't have to be done overnight. It doesn't have to be done in a week. In fact, it shouldn't be. Like you should let yourself give yourself space to get it done or get it done right. And write down everything because you want it to be a complete list. You don't want to forget things and be coming back to it all the time. Mm -hmm. Plus, you have a thousand other things to be working on. So it's not conducive or it's not productive if you quit working on all your other things and just focus on this one thing. 
Uh, thank you for saying that. I feel like there's a lot of people who just breathe this sigh of relief. <laughs> oh, I don't have to do all my <laughs> workflows in this five minutes. Okay. Exactly. We're on exactly. tip number five for organi- organize to propel. Yes. So the next thing would be to go ahead and work on that client inquiry process and make sure that it is rock solid. Like go back and make sure that it is the best system possible, that you have as much of it automated as possible. You have all of your email templates ready to go because yes, you're super busy right now, but come November, you're going to be done with your weddings and it's going to be engagement season again. And you're going to start that inquiry process. And I want you to be able to book your ideal clients without a ton of effort. And that starts with having amazing systems and organization from the beginning. And you are in luck because that's the next topic of this interview. Yes. (laughs) Okay. So I'm just going to do a really, really fast recap, everybody. One through five. So number one is to create your quadrant, figure out what you like, what you're good at, what you like but are shouldn't be doing, and what you hate and what you're not good at. Then step number two, how do we outsource? How do we figure out how to automate? Where do we need to go to make it happen? And then number three, once you figure out how, figure out the where, the what. What tools do you need? Uh, what resources do you need? Who are you outsourcing to? Find those actual human beings to outsource these things to. Somebody like Chelsea to create a workflow for you or multiple workflows. Number four, write down all of your business processes. And as Chelsea said, take them slow, like slow and steady wins the race. You don't have to do all of your business processes. Just Keep them on a sheet of paper. Keep them on a Google Doc. Don't get overwhelmed. And then finally, and oh my gosh, like such a stellar tip. Number five, work on your client inquiry process because we are all headed into engagement season. And if that isn't rock solid before then, you will regret it later. Yes. How'd I do? You. That was perfect. Woo. I was taking notes as you were recapping. I was like, oh yeah, I did say that. Oh yeah. I did <laughs> say that, sister. I got your back. Okay. So we really, this is great because... Uh, kicking off from number five, really working on our client inquiry process, let's talk about how we do that. And if you want to talk specifically about a particular software like Dubsado or like HoneyBook, I'm totally into that. A lot of listeners use those tools already. If you don't, this is still valid, valuable information. And if you're using one or the other that we're not talking about, the system is similar. I'm not going to say they're the same, but they are similar and they both run pretty parallel to each other. You can do these things. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're both really, really similar. Um, I will say if you are not ready to pay for either of these services, I do know that the price tag is pretty daunting. Um, Mm. when you're first starting out, I totally get it. I did not start using one of these programs. I started setting up zaps and creating automations myself and having a lot of templates. Um, So just know that you can do this for free. It's just going to take a little bit more um, effort on your part and a little bit more, like you won't be able to step away quite as much as you would if you are using a system that has automations built in. Okay. All right. Makes sense. So let's dive into our client inquiry process. Tell us about what makes a stellar process. So first of all, I am sure most of you have heard the stat that whoever gets the response in first is typically who gets booked. And my experience is that that is absolutely right, especially if you are a great fit anyway. Um, And so having your lead capture form on your website um, where they can actually give you information, they don't have to wait to talk to you, um, put that on your website. If you are using Dubsado or HoneyBook, you have the ability to take that um, lead capture form that you create in the system and embed it on your website. Go do that. And then inside the system, go ahead and set up an automatic reply to them saying, hey, I got your information, I'm gonna be in touch soon. And then if you have your pricing guide and you wanna send it, you can attach that. If you have other information you wanna send them, attach that. Um, But make sure that that email sounds like you, it does not sound like a script, write it like you would to your best friend and um, make sure that it's automated so it gets to them as soon as they fill out that form. So that's number one. Okay. And then after that is done, then we're going to work inside your system. And I'm actually going to pull up Dubsado really quick and make sure that I, that's the system that I personally use, um, for my business, but I do love HoneyBook too. Um, so let me go look at my templates. 
So after you have your lead capture form and it's embedded on your website, you have that um, automated email, that canned response ready, you're going to want to set up your proposal and make sure that your proposal, you have it set up for exactly what you know your clients are going to ask for. So if you want to do, uh, you have several packages that are full service, go ahead and put all those on one proposal. If you have several or a couple packages that are just day of variations, go ahead and put that on a separate proposal proposal. If you just have your three packages that are maybe like day of, um, kind of a mid range, not full service, but almost, and then the full, full service, um, put those on a proposal, whatever your packages are, you want to make sure that they are on a proposal that you can easily send to your clients quickly. It's going to show up on their phone. They don't have to download a PDF. They don't have to log into a system to see it. Um, make sure that it's electronic for them. And then go ahead and upload your contract and create invoices for those as well so that your client can automatically go from, okay, here's my proposal to, okay, I can sign the contract and pay you my first payment right now. Awesome. It's all done. I don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it. Your client doesn't have to worry about it. Everyone's happy. And if you bill in increments, like I do at the venue, your mm -hmm. invoices can be separated into the appropriate increments. And you can also uh, set up re my automated reminder emails with the link to yes. the invoice that, you know, a few days before it's due, on the day it's due, whatever feels good for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love those reminder emails. That's a place where you can reinforce your payment policies that are inside your contract. I always love to go ahead and put like, hey, if you don't pay by this date, I'm going to have to put a pause on our project. We're not going to get to move forward. I can't do any more work for you. Um, I also have a hard stop. If they haven't paid after seven days, that contract actually gets canceled. So I remind them of that. And thankfully, <laughs> I have never had to cancel a contract. Everyone has paid within a couple days of the due date. And I've actually only had two clients ever pay me late since I have set up these reminders. So isn't that amazing? It's, you know, mm -hmm. it feels, I love to say when Katie is my business partner, my sister-in-law at the venue, and we love to say that our contract and all of, all of our contracts, all of our documents, we let them kind of be like the bad cop and then yes. we can be like the nice guy. So everything we want them to know is in black and white and it's severe. It's not severe. That sounds mean, but it is. <laughs> it's not like, oh my gosh, please pay us by this date. Our contract is very like, if you don't pay us, we will cancel your wedding. Yes. But we let the contracts be the bad guy and then we're the human beings, obviously, but we're like yeah. the good cop. Uh, so think <laughs> about it that way. Put, Don't be afraid to put your process or your policies uh, in your emails. Like such a great tip. I don't know if you heard me. Exactly. Like, uh, use those reminder emails to put those tips in, but make sure all of this stuff is in your contract. Let it speak for itself. And then, you know, someday in your business, you are going to have to refer back to it because, you, you know, you'll run into those folks. Hopefully you don't. But if you do, then it's just in black and white. And it's, again, it's not personal. It's just business. Like here's the outline of what my payment policy is. Bye. Exactly. It takes the emotional aspect out of it, yes. which with all of the businessy tasks in your business, you want to remove the emotion so that you can stay calm and you can stay level headed. And it's not a personal attack on you. If they pay late, they just probably forgot, or maybe they had something come up and that money went somewhere else. And, but it's not personal. It's, it's their, their life, working through their things and your business. And so That's obviously right. having it in the contract helps a ton. And I highly recommend having very lengthy contracts that are detailed. Amen. Yes. yes. Tell us a little bit more. Oh my gosh. I mean, so this I love a podcast, but it really could. <laughs> so I, um, when I first started my business, I got a template and um, I actually got it from Annette Stepanian. And I think you've had her on your podcast a couple times. Oh, you know, I have. Um, She's amazing. Yeah. Love her. Yes. Hey, Annette, if you're listening, you're the best. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so I love her templates. They are amazing. I've actually taken the one template that I bought from her when I first started my business and I have used it several times to create all my other contracts that I use. Um, but it is very detailed. It covers all of my payment policies, all of the late payments. If there's any time that we have a disagreement about something, it's in there. If I'm doing um, design work for someone, it has lied, lined out specifically how much of the project it wants to be revised. Um, I think it's like 25%. If more than 25% needs revisions, then it constitutes as a completely new project um, with a new payment fees. Um, 
I have if you want to rush, like what that costs. Um, literally everything that you can think of needs to go in there. And if you are um, an event planner, you definitely need a ton of things in your contract to keep you safe, to keep your business safe, and to keep your clients safe so they know the expectations as well. Yes, I think, you know, I think having contracts, I'm so glad you said it that way, so to keep your clients safe so that they have expectations. You know, contracts can sometimes feel scary, but I, I love them so much. And we mm -hmm. are so, we're so passionate with our clients. We're like, read this. Here's a sample. Uh, if you don't like anything in it, we're not for you. You're going to have to move on because I'm not changing my contract. But I'm so glad you read it so that you know that we're not exactly. for you. And, exactly. And you know what I'm saying? And it's just, you know, boundaries and information mitigate animosity, you guys. And when, and especially confusion, like confusion leads to animosity really easily. And so if your contract yes. is not clear, or if there's a gray area, it can lead to client animosity and with like in a snap. And so you can really mitigate that by spelling things out and helping your clients go through that contract. Don't be afraid of it. It is like Chelsea just said, it's a protection for both of you. And I know you care about your clients and they should be reading those contracts. Exactly. Exactly. And I know a lot of wedding planners that will actually sit down and go through the contract line by line with their clients. And I think that's yes. fantastic because Lord knows they don't read it if you just hand them the contract. Um, so Definitely, like take the extra time to make sure they understand all of the policies and procedures. And all of that really should be in your contract. If it's part of the way you run your business, it needs to be in your contract. Mm, agreed. Okay, I got, I'm sorry, I got us off on a rabbit trail. I apologize, but that was <laughs> No, great. no, it's totally fine. Thank you so much for entertaining my... <laughs> My, uh, my I get moment. a little passionate about that too. Me too. Obviously, we can have a big conversation about that offline. Okay, so we got through, I just want to bring us back a little bit. We got mm -hmm. through client inquiry process, I think, like yes. we were uploading our contract and so, our invoices. Anything you want to add yes. to that? So the other thing you need to do is go ahead and write out every single email that you think you are going to send to a client. And typically, like most of your clients need the same information throughout the inquiry process. So go ahead and write those out, save them. Um, if you're using a system like Dubsado or HoneyBook, you can save them as canned emails inside the system. Or if you're just using your Gmail, turn on the canned um, responses feature and save them within your Gmail. It does only work on desktop or on the internet when you go through the website, gmail.com. Um, but at least you have an option to save some canned emails there. Yes, so fast. Now, yes. I have a question for you. How do you feel? About, so right now we use Dubsado and uh, and I have, you know, lots of workflows and everything set up, but I still use Gmail a lot. I'm actually not, I mean, I communicate mm -hmm. in Dubsado, but if somebody has a quick question, uh, like, let me, let me think of an example. Um, oh, okay. Like, do you have any bartender recommendations? You get that a lot. Or, you know, let's just use that as an example. But yeah. that comes directly to our business Gmail account. It's not coming to Dubsado. Um, is that just, do you, is there a way to connect those two? Um, I really? actually don't know the answer to that. Um, I actually, so the way that I keep it separate is, so anything that is someone who is a potential client or is a current client, um, typically they'll be hitting respond or reply to an email that I've sent to them. And so those I try to put inside Dubsado. If a client emails me just through Gmail, I will actually copy and paste and put it inside Dubsado. And um, it's actually on my long list of things for Dubsado that I want to either figure out a workaround for or send and for um, some requests for them to build out. Um, but Got the it. other thing is if they are not a client yet and they are like, let's say that this person asking for bartender recommendations, they are not a client yet. They just know that you're awesome and want some recommendations or they're a vendor that you're working with and they want some recommendations. I think it's totally fine to leave those inside your Gmail, but I do try to train my clients to hit respond to emails that I send to them to email me. In Dubsado. Inside and yeah. Or, so they don't have to be inside right. Dubsado, but it will go through Dubsado if right. they hit respond. Okay, cool. So yes, same. I just didn't know if there was a way to actually connect those. So no, I'm glad I haven't been spending yeah. like a year not doing the right thing. Yeah. Um, if there's a way, Becca, and you're listening, let us know. <laughs> right. She's probably like, oh, girls, let me show you. Let me, let me show you the way. 
Okay, what else do we need to know about processes? So we're we just got done. Uh, we're writing out every single email, and mm-hmm. I feel like this would be you would have the same advice for this as as we would for our processes, which is you don't have to sit down in a six hour period and write out every single email that you would ever send in your business. As you are sending things, just click into it, copy paste it, put it in a Google Doc, or just write down a little note on your notepad so that you can then create the the full email is that right I mean do you feel exactly the same way? Okay. yes no I do the exact same thing um, and actually if you're using canned responses in gmail it's super easy after you finish typing the email just click and say save new canned response um, and then you can go in and edit the next one mm-hmm. it's super fast so beautiful okay what's yeah. next with our systems and processes So then as far as your inquiry process, those are the really important steps. You want to make sure that you have those pieces in place before clients come to you so that you're able to quickly get them all the information that they need. Um, And then as far as your other systems, like I just want you to find a system that is going to keep help you do the things that you want to be doing and track the things that you want to be tracking. Um, So whether that is putting things inside Asana, if you're a checklist junkie like me, Asana, you're going to love it. If you think more in like Kanban style um, boards and like sticky notes everywhere, you're going to love Trello or the board side uh, or board view inside Asana. So finding a system where you can keep track of all of these things is going to be super, super helpful for you. And, and then once you have that system, going back to that list that we made earlier of all of those steps in each process and just adding it so that you have that checklist ready to go every time that you have a project. And I actually love copying my different, so I set up templates inside Asana with all of my, my workflows for each checklist Mm -hmm. and, um, each project type so that when a new client comes along, all I have to do is copy it and add their name to it. And I am ready to go. Mm, So good. It's so good. Okay, what about do you have what about offboarding your clients? Yes. So offboarding, again, I put that inside Mm Dubsado, similar process, you want to write all those emails that you want to send to them after the event is over. um, And make sure that you are asking for a review, tell them exactly where to go to put that review. So if you want them to go to Yelp, put it on put the link to Yelp. If you want them to go leave a review on Google or on Facebook or on Wedding Wire or on The Knot, wherever it is that you want your um, reviews to go, put that link in that email so they are more likely to go write a review. Yes. Uh, Yeah, and go ahead and schedule that out. I actually have them scheduled to go out um, a week for if I do any, um, when I was doing weddings, I had it go out two weeks after the wedding. So they got home from their honeymoon. They had some time to like chill out, get back to real life and kind of process the whole we're married now thing. And then they got the email from me. Um, So definitely at the very least set up those emails. If you are ready to start sending client gifts, go ahead and send a small gift to them afterwards saying, thanks so much. I loved working with you. Let me know if we can ever work together, especially if you do other types of events. Um, if we can work together in the future, let me know when you get pregnant. Just kidding. (laughs) Yes. If you're a photographer, definitely do that. Let them know if you do family sessions because they will want you. Um, if that's one thing, if you find a great photographer, you go with them for life. That is so true. Yes. Okay, I love it. And a quick, just a, I wanted to circle back to what you said about asking for reviews. Um, who did I hear this from? And I loved it so much. My Oh, Cinnamon, who's also been a guest on the podcast. Her name is Cinnamon Wolf. She has her own podcast. It's called The Focus Podcast. And one of the things that she found, and this is something that you can determine with your own clientele. If they're clicking on the link and they know exactly what to do, great. You don't need this tip. But she was finding with some of her clients, it was really hard for them to navigate Google reviews, but that's where she wanted her reviews. So she included some screenshots of once you click the link, like, you know, with arrows, like click here and then click here. And it really helped her gather more reviews because her clients were like, oh, I get it. You know, because they, you know, they may not always be like, oh, gee, I think I'll head to Google and leave a review now for all of my, uh, you know, all of the services I had this weekend. You know, most people aren't thinking. Yes. No, they aren't. And you want to, with everything that is client facing, you want to make it as easy and simple as possible so that they are able to do it and take action while they read the email. Because if they get out of the email, they're not likely to come back to it. Ooh, 
Yes. They get out of the email, they're not likely to come back to it. So true. Gosh, yes. I know that's true with my email. Whoops. Yes, me too. So We all, we all are <laughs> like that. We'll read an email and we're like, I me. need to do this later. Right. <laughs> and then we never come back to it. I will file this appropriately. Just kidding. Yes. No, I won't. <laughs> About all a week right. later, I'm like, okay, I should archive you. <laughs> it's true. It's just like, well, it's too late to respond to that. All right. Yeah. Have we, do we need to wrap, have we missed anything? I feel like this was <sighs> action, an action packed 40 minutes. Did yes. I miss anything? So, what do you want to include? Um, just a reminder that this is just the tip of the iceberg when we yes. start working with our workflows and getting your business organized. Um, and just remember that it is a slow process and it is okay to go slow. It doesn't have to change overnight. In fact, it shouldn't, it probably won't work if you try and change everything overnight. So give yourself that grace and that space to think and really analyze and edit things where you need to and be very strategic on the things that you want to keep. Perfect. I could not have said it better myself. Chelsea, tell everybody where they can find you online. Yeah. So um, you can find me on Instagram. That is the absolute best place to reach out to me. I hang out on Instagram pretty much all day long. I'm at Chelsea B. Foster. Um, and then you can find me on the website if you're interested in working with me, chelseabfoster.com. I also, I forgot to mention this at the beginning, I have um, a membership site, which is called the Empowered Business or Empowered Boss Lab. My goodness. It's been a long day. Oh, really? <laughs> um, no, it's fine. So the Empowered Boss Lab is specifically about helping other women build their businesses and make sure that you are getting organized, burnout proofing your business. Um, so I actually have workshops inside there as well including the workshop library, which has every single workshop that I've ever done. If you remember, you get access to it for free. Um, so there, and then also my podcast, burnoutproofyourbiz.com. Um, that those are the best ways to get in touch with me. Perfect. And I will link to all of these in the show notes. So whatever podcast player you're listening to, if it's iTunes, scroll up a little bit. If it's not, tap it, scroll up, whatever you need to do. And you'll see the links there. So click there, get in touch with Chelsea. And remember that Chelsea is an actual implementer. I think this is such a port. I know I said it at the beginning, but I'm going to say it one more time because this is a very important distinction. A lot of people that uh, do business are like, take my course. I don't do actual implementation. I just give you the plan. This is implementation. So you could literally take something off your plate tomorrow. Um, so I think that's, I think that's an important distinction to make. Chelsea, thank you so much for this information. It was so invaluable. I have a few things I'm even going to go add to Dipsado right now. Oh, yay. Thank you so much for having me, Kenzie. My pleasure. Have a good night. Thank you so much for listening to She Creates Business. Please take a minute and head to iTunes to leave an honest review so we can help more wedding pros find the show.